Okay, so now on number three, we're still doing confidence. So you're interested in finding a 98% confidence level for the average number of days of class that college students miss each year. You guys don't miss any class, right? The data below shows the number of missed days for 11 randomly selected college students. Round your answers to three decimal places where possible. So, so this is the data. So one student missed six days um, in a year. Another one missed only one. Next one missed 11, 10, six, zero. That's Mr. or Mrs. Perfect there. Uh, three days, eight days, et cetera. So these, there's 11 students, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, 11. 11 students each reported the number of days of class they missed, they miss each year. And they're trying to figure out a find a confidence interval, maybe the administration or whatever, wants to figure out for our college, what's the average number of days students miss per year. So now they, they don't have time or the ability to ask every single student. It's just too difficult. That's why we have statistical methods because we just can't ask every person. Um, we, we, you know, in a survey or a poll or trying out a new drug, you have to just try a few and try to make a scientific estimate based on information from a few. So we're asking 11 students at random, right? 11 randomly selected college students. So, and we're gonna use that to form a 98, we're gonna be 98% sure that we capture the true average, what they call the population for the whole population for all the college students, not just for the sample, right? This is a sample, right? This is just 11 people, but we wanna, we want to use that to become 98% confident of the population mean, the, the average for the whole population. All right, how do we do it? Well, we're going to go to our calculator. This time, we're going to, we're going to use something a little different because we have data. How are we going to do it? Well, let me, let me go find the, uh, there it is, the calculator instructions for you. So here we are, we're on 8.2, but this time it's going to be down here on data given. So we're going to, so what we have to do first is enter the data into L1 by choosing stats and then edit. First, put the data into L1 and then go to T interval and choose data. All right, so that's what we need to do. So enter that. So go to stats and choose edit. So the first thing you're going to do on this one is you're going to hit the stats button or it's stat, I'm sorry, it's just stat, the stat button. And then you're, and you're already on edit. You will just hit enter because you're already on edit at that point. And you'll have the menus, you know, the L1, L, L2, L1, L2, L3 will pop up on your screen. You want to highlight L1 and press the clear button because you want to clear out L1. So go up to the top of L1, move, move up to L1 and hit clear and enter. And that'll clear out L1. And then next, put the data, what data? This data down L1. So put that data down L1. I'll show it on my screen in a minute. I'm going to do it first with my handheld calculator. Then I'll show it. So put that data down L1. And then after you got the data down L1, um, here, let me move this up a little bit. Uh, Mr. Heron, I'm, I'm a little lost. We're on the data side now. Yeah, put the data down L1 and then hit second, quit. And the quit button is right above the mode. Let me write that for you. Yeah, I'll show this in just a second. Second mode. Yeah, so let me show. Let me jump over to my other screen and show you what I'm talking about. So here's Mike, you guys are seeing my calculator now, right? 
and turn it on and clear. All right, so here we go. We're going to hit stat and see how we're right there on the edit already. So I just hit stat, the stat button, and see how it says edit? I'm going to hit enter because I want to edit. I want it, meaning like editing a Word document or something. You know how like when you write a paper for one of your classes, you edit a word processing document? Well, that's kind of like what we're doing for a list of numbers. We're editing, we're putting in a list of numbers. Hit enter. And here's L1, L2, L3. Now mine's already clear, but you might have like old data. I'm assuming you have old data. In that case, go up to the top. See how I'm highlighting L1? Press clear and enter, and it will clear out L1 for you. And then put the numbers down L1, the data. Here we go, six, and I'll just push the down arrow. One, down arrow. 11, down arrow. 10, down arrow. Six, down arrow. Zero, down arrow. Three, down arrow, eight, and three, eight, down arrow, three, down arrow, 12, down arrow, two, down arrow. There we go. I put the whole list in, the whole list of data is down arrow. Now watch what I'm gonna press, second and quit, the mode button, which has quit above it. That'll quit out of this menu. Well, wait a minute. Um, Maybe you don't need to. I, th I think, here, let me try. I think maybe you don't need, just hit stat now, I think. Yeah, yeah, just don't worry about the quit. Just hit stat. So I just hit stat again, because now we're going to calculate it. So then just hit stat again. I'll write this out for you in a minute. Just hit stat again. Now go over to tests. Go over to tests. Go down to T test. Oh, no, I'm sorry, no. Go down to number eight again, which is T interval. Enter. So now we have that data stored in L1, right? Hit enter. Now I'm on the T interval. I'm going to move over to the data option. Am I going too fast? Want me to slow down? Are we good there? Move over to the data option. You have to hit enter. And then it changes the menu. And see how it says list L1, frequency one, that's perfect. You want to grab the data from the list that's in L1. That's what you're telling it. You don't need to do, you don't need to change anything. It's got it perfect. All we need to change is the C level. It's saying, you want me to grab the list from the data in L1 and the frequency is one, meaning each of those numbers in the list occurs with frequency one, only one time each. Yes, we're never going to change that. Just go on down and change the C level to whatever you need. In my case, I need confidence level 0.98. Mr. Heron, I have a question about the frequency. Yeah. So that's saying that every, every number occurs once. But like, for example, I have six, like in mine, I have six, four times. I have 10, three times. Does that matter? Right, good question. Yeah, what, what, what it's saying is every number you put in the list, you're only wanting one of those numbers. In other words, what, what you could do, because what, what this is designed for is if you had a list and you had like 17 sixes, rather than having to type in six, down arrow, six, down arrow, you could just type in six and tell the calculator, produce 17 of those for me, please. So, so we're just simply not going to deal with large data sets like that. So we're never going to change the frequency number. Even though you have like two or three different sixes in your list, you're just saying each of the entries in your list, you want, you want only one of those on that line. You're not wanting several of those on any line. So yeah, don't worry about it. Just put your data in. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. So then we calculate. And there it is. 2.1549 to 9.1178. In other words, we are 98% sure that, on, that, the, that the true average number of days missed for the college students per year is somewhere between two and nine. 
based on that sample of 11 students and how many days they missed. So let me go back to my iPad screen and share that. And I'll write out what we just did. So you have it. Really. Can you tell us how to get the data? Um, can you show us how to get the data from L1 into the T interval data set? Um, so, um, yeah, well, let, yeah, let me, um, well, let me, here, I'll write it out. And uh, let's see, so I'll write it out here. So we, so we put the data in L1, put, put the data down L1, and then you just simply, after you've got the data down L1, all you have to do is press the stat button. Just press the stat button at that point. Go over twice to the test. So once you've got the data down L1, you don't have to do anything other than go perform the test. It'll go grab the data. So once the data is down L1, just hit the stat button, go over to tests and go down to the T interval, just like we did on the other stuff. Go down to the T interval and hit enter. And then you have to you have to choose data this time though. That's what's different. You have to highlight data and hit enter. So not stats, but data and hit enter. And then that will give you a little menu and it will say list. And you just make sure that's L1. It probably already is. Frequency, we just leave that at one. We're saying one of each of those entries and confidence level, just put in whatever. On mine, it's 0.98 and hit enter. It'll automatically go grab that data in L1 for you. You don't need to do anything. By putting, by putting L1 right here, you're telling it to grab the data in L1 to make its calculation. It knows it'll do it and um, you'll have your numbers. And so again, my numbers came out to be what they come out to be 2.15. How many? It didn't say how many places to round. Oh, three places. Okay, 2.1549. So 155 to 9.118. There we are. We're 98% confident that for the whole population, for all college students, the mean, the average is somewhere between 2.1 and 9.1 on that. Is that making sense? Now, the last two questions are going to be just what they were before. Meaning what? Meaning when you come down here and it says, if, a, if, if many groups of 11 randomly selected college students are surveyed and a different conference will produce, about what percent of the confidence levels will contain the true thing? Well, we just did a 98% confidence level. So that means 98% of the time you'll contain the true average and 2% of the time you will not contain the true average. They're just making sure you understand that there's not 100% sureness. Maybe the true average is 10, you know, and it's not really between 2.1 and 9.1, but we're 98% sure that the real average is between 2.1 and 9.1. 98% of the time that you do this kind of survey, you're gonna capture the real average. 2% of the time you won't. That's what that states.